Tonight I'm going to be looking at a really cool device that helps you track down objects in space if you've got either a miniature Dobsonian or a big Dobsonian or a, any kind of altazimuth based telescope. Those are the ones that simply move up, down, left and right. Now this device doesn't use any encoders or anything complicated like that. You don't even need to be connected to the internet. It simply connects to an app on your phone using Bluetooth and runs off three AAA batteries. So this is a very small device. I was surprised how small it was. It's about, I think it's 78 millimeters long and only weighs 85 grams. So very discreet, so discreet in fact that I've been able to mount it on my Heritage 100P miniature tabletop Dobsonian, which I've got mounted on a tripod. There's a button on the top to press and then when it's working, it flashes uh, a red LED at you. Now that's on, I've remembered to turn it on finally. I will go to the app, connect, uh, yep. Yeah. It's saying meme star there, so I'll click on that. Do not touch the box during installation. Your meme star does not appear to be calibrated. Would you like to proceed with this? And that's definitely a yes. The meme star installation procedure is necessary for proper operation. This procedure must be done each time the meme star is installed and will no longer be necessary as long as the housing remains attached. If you were to detach it or place it on another telescope, you will have to redo this procedure. So this isn't every time you do it, it's just every time you change it between telescopes. The more care you take with this installation, the better accuracy you will achieve. Fix the meme star securely to the bottom of the tube as close to the axis of rotation as possible. The arrow on the housing should point to the top of the telescope. I can't see in the dark, but I'm gonna assume it is. Once installed, keep your telescope steady and click validate, which I'll do now. Right, installation. Star one of four, search for a star by its name or constellation and point to it. So I'll type in Vega. Oh, it's the first one on the list. So I'm going to go and point at that now. Okay, so I'm going to validate that. And there's a star map to sort of help make sure that you're, if you've not got a clue where the star is, a star map should help. So star two, search for the star by its name. And uh, let's go for Mizar. I can just about see that. Uh, Mizar, oh, yeah, Mizar, it tells you it's in the Big Dipper as well. Can I pinch in there? Yeah, so I can see on the screen, I can see that it's that double, one of the double stars in the handle of the Big Dipper, Ursa Major. So I'm going to point to that next. There we go. Right, validate that. Third star. Search for a star by name. Yep, let's go for Deneb, why not? Okay, so I'll put Deneb in there and then I validate. Kath and Cassiopeia. It's almost at Zenith, that one. Ooh. Validate. Calculating in progress, don't touch the telescope. Mean star is in the processing of determining its optimal operation. The operation takes about 30 seconds. When this process is completed, oh, it's already done. The installation is complete. You will no longer need to do this procedure as long as the meme star remains attached to the telescope. Note that if you were to move the meme star, you will need to do this procedure again. So again, changing telescopes, you'd need to do that again. But as long as it stays on that telescope, I don't need to do that again. So I can go to the catalogue next. Select an object and move the telescope tube in the direction. Well, the moon's up there, so it'd be good to see if it actually finds it. So if I put moon, oh yeah, solar system. Um, let's go for the moon. And I'm going to point it at the moon. And hopefully, what's it doing then? Here we go. So it's got some arrows. 
which I'm assuming I need to get to zero on the azimuth. Oh, minus 10. That one's good. And oh, that's interesting. It's an interesting way of doing it. It's not far off, actually. It's just outside the field of view of my eyepiece, but I can see that it's in the right... Like, it's pointing there, and it should be there. So it's, like, literally... I'll, I'll point to the moon now and show you how far out it is. There we go. So it wasn't that far out at all, really. I reckon if I put a lower power eyepiece in and did a better job with the calibration, it would be good. I wonder if there's a way to actually align now I've actually got it. Once the object is in the centre of the eyepiece, if you notice that the coordinates are greater than one degree, click on the line to improve that. Yeah, brilliant. So that's, that's brilliant then. Oh, excellent. So that means it should be more accurate when I move to the next object. Amazing. Cool. Let's try this again then. Let's, let's have a little look around. Bearing in mind I've got a four inch reflector in Bortle Seven Skies with a moon. Well, Bortle Six Seven. And the clouds are coming in. What can I just quickly check it on? It's got to be something bright. I can probably just about make out the ring nebula or the dumbbell. So let's try the dumbbell. Go to catalogue. Go to uh, Messier. M27. If I just put 27 in, is it going to do it? Yep, yeah, perfect. Cool. And it's going to show me some arrows on the screen. I don't know if you can see. I don't know if you can see the arrows there, but I'll try and flash it up on the screen if not. And we can point, so I need to get that, the height to zero. And, oh, there we go. I probably sh should have picked a brighter, oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, it was just on the edge of the field of view of the 15 mil eyepiece. Yeah, I'm going to see a slight smudge. I use my averted vision. Yeah, so that got me pretty close. This is pretty cool, <laughs> I like it. This is getting a thumbs up from me because that was quite simple to set up and the, the app's fun and intuitive to use. I've not read any instructions or anything. Just picked it up. This could be one of my new favorite toys for the observing side of, of astronomy, I think. You could quite easily pop that on your Dobsonian and um, just blast through a Messier marathon pretty quickly with that. And there's no real worry about sort of the internet dropping out because it just uses Bluetooth, free AA batteries, no encoders to worry about. So yeah, I'm liking it so far. This is a really cool device. So yeah, price-wise, um, it's £189, I believe, but I'll check that and put it on screen if I'm wrong about that. But yeah, I think I'm just going to turn the camera off for now and enjoy this before the clouds fully roll in. Okay, so I'm out again with the meme star on a subsequent night. And just to recap, we, on the last night with it, we went through a four star alignment prompted by the meme star app. And after that, we were able to accurately locate objects. They, they appeared kind of the edge of the field of view in quite a narrow, medium narrow eyepiece, shall we say, two degree eyepiece. Now, what it kind of hinted at was that we wouldn't have to go through that stage again when we next came to setting up the telescope, as long as we didn't move the meme star onto a different telescope. So I've kept it in situ. And what you have to do once you finish your session is you have to just press the, the button on the meme star to get it to go in standby. So if I start up the app now and we run through the, you know, the second night out with it and to see whether it skips a lot of that alignment procedure and how accurate it is when it does that. So that's set my recording off here. 
and go into the meme star app oh turn it on connect again and it's given me the option to start from scratch basically or keep the alignment we did last time so we're going to go to keep and then the next thing we do is hit calibration to start observing um, and it's prompting us to do a one star alignment so I'm going to put in Vega which is just behind the camera at the moment and we'll go to that and have a look OK, we've got that in the centre of the eyepiece. I've got a 20 mil, I've got an Ursa Major 25 mil in today, so a wider field of view. Uh, OK, so validate. And it says, congratulations, we're set up. So if it finds objects after just doing a one star alignment, that's going to be really quick for setup. So let's go to catalogue. And I can see, you can probably see on camera, we've got Jupiter behind me in the east. Uh, so let's go and have a look, see if it points towards that. So if I go catalog, solar system, click on planet and Jupiter. And then we've got some arrows on screen to guide us to the object. Hopefully, Ooh, it's looking promising. Okay, and so I'm just following, I'm not looking through the telescope at all, I'm just following what the app is saying. So the height and the azimuth until we get two green ticks like that. So hopefully when I look through the eyepiece, yeah, I can see Jupiter and its moons at about the 10 o'clock position, about two thirds of the way out in this 60, 60 degree IP. So I'm just going to center that now. There you go. So there we go. I'm centered now. Perfect. So yeah, it really does work. So on subsequent nights, I struggle saying that word, um, on subsequent nights, it's really quick and easy to set this up. I think you just got to remember to put it on standby once you finish doing it, because I did do a quick test where I forgot to do that and then it didn't find the object when I went to, went to start a session again. So you have to put it on standby once you've finished, and then before you connect to the app again, hit the button again. Uh, that's what I've read in the, in the instructions. So if you buy one of these and you find that on a subsequent night out, I wish I'm gonna to have to try and find an alternative word for that. Um, if you find that on a second night out with it, you can't, it's not locating objects as it should. It's because it probably needs to go into hibernation mode before you start your next session. That's what I put it down to anyway, because doing so resolved the issue for me. But it's working brilliantly now. Just one star alignment on a second night out, and I'm just finding objects in the space of, what, a minute or two? So let me try and find another object just to, just to further proof that everything's okay. So if I go to go back and go to catalog and we'll try and find what else is there about okay so uh, yeah Pleiades I've got a lovely wide angle eyepiece and so let's go and have a look at Messier 45 um, 45 Pleiades okay so again following just what it's saying on the phone rather than looking through the telescope So it should be there when I look for it now. Yeah, amazing, really good. And this little Heritage 100P is really nice for open clusters. With its wide field of view. 
Okay, so even though I've only had a couple of nights out with this, I'm already frankly impressed with it. I think you can probably tell by the way I'm reacting to it. I mean, it's quite remarkable that a tiny little box that you stick on your telescope can do this magical wizardry. I'm sure that if anyone showed that a couple of hundred years ago, they'd be burnt at the stake or something. Uh, it's just remarkable what it can do, really. Uh, four star alignment on the first night. Bang finds objects easy, and then on subsequent nights, it, it's just a one star alignment, and away you go, really quick and simple. No encoders, no internet, just low power Bluetooth and three small AAA batteries. And the box is tiny, so it can, you know, it's not out of place even on this tabletop telescope at all. It's completely, yeah, it's completely reasonable price wise as well. I think it was 189 pounds, I think. I'll check that. Um, but yeah, I like it. I, if you want to check it out, it'll be in the description for you to take a look at. And I just want to thank my channel members and my patrons as always. Thank you very much for what you do. And thanks very much. And we'll see you on the next video.